So this is something that is absolutely fascinating. Let me go ahead and throw this up there for you. The tweet says, Incredible, less than two months after New York City opened the first two supervised drug consumption sites in the United States, they have reversed 114 overdoses. So this is from, I believe, Politico. Cities supervised injection sites reverse over 100 overdoses. It is Politico. There you go. New York City's two supervised drug injection sites have reversed more than 100 overdoses since they opened their doors less than two months ago. The nation's first officially authorized injection sites began operating at the end of November, one in East Harlem and one in Washington Heights. They allowed clients to openly use drugs under the supervision of trained staff, hoping to combat an overdose crisis that killed more than 2,000 people in the city in 2020. Damn, 2,000. They have reversed 114 overdoses, according to data from the program first reviewed by Politico. Quote, the need is greater than anyone even expected, said Sam Rivera, executive director of On Point New York City, which runs the facilities. The city health department initially estimated that injection sites, also known as overdose prevention centers, could save up to 130 lives a year. Well, my guess it's going to be more than 130 lives a year because in two months it was 114. Now, maybe you say, hey, not all those overdose people would have died, but some percentage of them would. I don't know what the exact answer would be there, but it looks to me like they'd save more lives than that. So listen, this is one of those issues where, honestly, if you asked me about it, I would have said, that's a bridge too far. I don't think I'm in favor of that. But now when you look at the data and you look at the positive effects, I, I changed my mind. I think it's a good idea. I think it's a good idea. The reason why I say that is because my approach when it comes to drugs is I want to legalize tax and regulate them. So with that being the approach... It's just sort of in the marketplace. They're, the government's like not really involved. This is an instance where the government is involved and they have the injection centers. But the whole point of them having the injection centers is to save lives, lives if need be. Because if people are going to do the drugs anyway, and they are, some percentage are going to do the drugs, then it's good to have medical professionals there in case something happens. Now, of course, the right-wing reaction to this, generally, is when you have injection sites like this, what are you doing? you're incentivizing people to do the drugs. And you're saying, it's okay to do the drugs. And they don't think it's okay to do the drugs, so they want to disincentivize people from doing the drugs, so of course they don't want these centers open. But the fact of the matter is, as I already laid out, people are going to do the drugs regardless. It's just a matter of, do you want them, you know, sharing a needle and spreading around diseases in some dark back alley and overdosing and dying, or would you rather have public health be the main concern and you could do it like this and end up saving lives? And as long as your concern is public health and saving lives, then the answer is a no-brainer now, because the data's in. So I was previously against this policy because I didn't see how the government should be involved with drugs. I just want to legalize tax and regulate and leave it to the marketplace. But now I look at this and I say, no, this is the right thing to do. This is the right thing to do. You're not incentivizing people to take the drugs. People are going to take the drugs anyway. And um, if you can save lives and impact public health in a positive way, the other thing is you get clean needles, you're not spreading around diseases. That's also a massive upside. So I guess the point here is there are some policies that are going to objectively, empirically be good that maybe on paper or in theory sort of sound a little wacky. And I think it's important in politics to be open-minded about solutions because sometimes solutions come along that at face value might sound absurd but they actually have a tremendous number of upsides and very few, if any, downsides. So I don't think the right is going to be in favor of stuff like this, but you can't deny this is a massive success. If you're in favor of these 114 lives being saved, it's a success. If you're in favor of lower disease rates, it's a success. So I may have been against it before, but I'm learning and I'm growing and I see now that it's the right thing to do. So we should probably do this all around the country because how many lives will we save if we do that? Now, by the way, final point. When we had the opioid pill crisis, there were a lot of people dying every year from the pills. Well, now they cracked down on the pills. And they cracked down on the pills, and the, then everybody went to the black market and started getting heroin instead of the pills to scratch their itch. And then when they got heroin, a lot of the heroin is cut with fentanyl, and more people died. So when we had the pills out there... Fewer people were dying from overdoses. Now we've cracked down on the pills and more people are dying because they're going to the black market and getting fentanyl-laced heroin. So there's another lesson in there about, hey, something that sounds good in theory, right? Hey, the pills are killing people in a very high number. I forget what the number was, 30,000 a year or something to that effect. So we just ban the pills or, or drastically reduce the pills by having strict rules on doctors about prescribing these things. Well... 
look at what happened. The unintended consequence of a policy that sounded good on paper was more people dying. And by the way, there's another unintended consequence of people who fucking need the pills for chronic pain now not being able to get them. You know, shit, I experienced this when I tore my calf and I was in the emergency room. They wouldn't even give me Tylenol or Motrin, never mind a Vicodin, which I definitely could have used. So, sometimes the things that sound good on paper are actually terrible. Sometimes the things that sound wacky on paper are actually awesome, and you have to follow the data, and there's a great example of it here. Ever since Adpocalypse, when YouTube defunded all independent news and politics overnight, we haven't trusted them. We know they can pull the rug out from underneath us at any time. If you enjoy this content, please consider tipping a dollar or two per month on the Secular Talk Patreon. Link in the video description box below. Thanks for your support.